Uh, yeah, hi, um, it's me again. Ah. <laughs> um, and this time I'm presenting a, a short paper. Um, yeah, it's called uh, Step Detection for Later Users with Smartwatches. Um, and this paper again deals with spatial activity in a real spatial environment, not in the VR. Yeah, um, so this work has been completed last year with my colleagues from the Fraunhofer IGD in Rostock, Germany. Um, at first, I would like to share our motivation why we conducted this research. In 2016, a young startup company from Sweden approached us based on some previous publications they found online in which we presented how to calculate activity data um, and vital data on commercial smartwatches. And yeah, they wanted to have such an app and we basically promised them, uh, no worries, we can do this. And uh, the company actually they were aiming to deploy um, smartwatches among elderly people to assess their health status and to calculate their risk of fall. Um, so we closed the deal and delivered this, uh, yeah, this nice uh, Android app, uh, which is capable of calculating a variety of parameters. Um, for example, just some thing it does is uh, it calculates your steps throughout the day. Um, there's a timed up and go threshold test. It's a uh, yeah, medical uh, test. Then there's a six minute walking test. These are like some medical uh, tests usually uh, a doctor is performing in the lab to assess your, um, yeah, your health. Um, yeah, the app can also detect uh, posture transitions and so on, a variety of things. And uh, most of the stuff is based on accelerometer data. What happened next was a little bit surprising for us. Um, we delivered the app, but the company got back to us and said, hey, your algorithms are crap, we're not going to pay you. Uh, insuffic working insufficiently, they, they said something like this. Um, and then for debugging purposes, we actually asked for the raw data, and they already ran their study with elderly people, and for some reasons, they just sent us the entire database from a lot of uh, patients, and yeah, data protection seems to be, yeah, not that issue in Sweden, or maybe not with the company. Anyways, um, so what we find, found out was interesting. Um, well, the failed algorithm basically relied on our implemented step detection. Yeah, then we remembered um, a study we conducted already uh, many years ago. And back then, we were comparing the step detection algorithms from different devices and um, yeah, pedometers worn inside uh, the pen's pocket. And we found out that uh, the step detection algorithms deployed with yeah, these uh, mobile phones and pedometers, they need a certain step impact in order to yeah, recognize the steps. And also um, a certain walking speed. And with the walking speed, the impact, of course, raises. Um, in this graph, we can see that reasonable accuracy is achieved when walking at least with a speed of three kilometer per hour. Um, Apparently, elderly people do usually do not walk that fast. And also the collected raw data showed um, that the, the step impact is really, really low. And it turned out after a conversation with the company that half of their participants, they were actually using a rollator. And yeah, what is a rollator? Um, a rollator is a very common assistive device among elderly people. There are thousands of types, but they all follow uh, the same construction. It basically consists of a frame, wheels, and a handle. Might sometimes can also be a handle like this. Um, yeah. um, and this device, of course, aims uh, to support the elderly people to keep their balance because they lose sense of their balance with increasing age, as we all know. Some uh, further effects. So the very first lightweight walking frame was actually invented in 1950s already. And uh, the very first later was invented in 1978 by an Austrian company who then called it Rollator. It was very successful in Scandinavian, also in Germany, and of course in, in Austria. Uh, and in Germany, by the way, um, around half a million of Rollators are being sold annually. In, uh, I didn't know that, that's kind of impressive. And that's why this research, I think, is kind of interesting. Um, therefore, the next step was um, to evaluate how accurate are state-of-the-art step detections with current wrist phone devices when using such a relator. I equipped eight smart watches and smart bands and walked twice 150 steps indoors with a relator. 
as already spoiled, the overall recognition is just around 10%. Obviously, more participants are required uh, if you really want to make a statement on how good devices are, but that's not the aim of this study. Um, actually, um, yeah, more, more participants would not actually uh, yeah, raise the, the accuracy um, like the double or three times. So I suspect most of uh, the current state of the art version devices are insufficiently working for full years. Here we can see uh, again the typical arm swing, swing sorry, um, happening from the healthy participants. And this is being captured by the accelerometer. And apparently, when grasping a relator, this arm swing is not existing anymore. And the steps impact is also very low and yeah, not reflected at the accelerometer, obviously. But maybe it is. <laughs> Um, however, we can utilize actually the waist twist, which can also, which is kind of reflected at the arm, but the motion is very, very marginal. You could see it here. And to also capture this waist twist, we developed a new step detection algorithm, which is computationally inexpensive and can be used in parallel to any existing step detections, for example, when they fail. I will briefly explain how this algorithm works. As a first step, we segment the data stream. We selected here a window size of 1024. However, um, this can be changed to a smaller or wider window um, yeah, to your choice. And next, we eliminate the sensor drift by pre-processing the data using a D-train and offset filtering. And the very next step is actually kind of crucial and also the main reason why most step detections fail in recognizing those low amplitude motions. Um, by using uh, an accelerometer, the motion is usually spread into three axes, X, Y, Z. Um, and when you have like a small swing um, in a low amplitude motion, one um, axis has always a counter movement. Uh, we can actually see this on, on the top left. And when we calculate a 3D vector norm right now, uh, the signal yeah, looks a bit meaningless. Um, that's why uh, before calculating the 3D vector norm, we of course filter the data, and then we need to determine which axis to flip around. And then we have um, yeah, the, the bottom left um, graph, and when we calculate the 3D vector norm um, afterwards, we have the very nice signal on the bottom right. Um, yeah, also when doing so, it does not matter if you wear the smartwatch on your left wrist or on your right wrist. It doesn't matter. <coughs> then a Butterworth band pass is applied to filter out unwanted motion artifacts other than walking. Uh, we empirically determined these color frequencies, which provided just sufficient um, enough results to recognize the walking motion emitted um, from elderly people. In the end, we deploy a simple peak detection and multiply those peaks by two. This is because um, we did not count the reverse swing, only like one swing all the time, not the back swing. Um, yeah, but then we lose the second step, so we just multiply uh, these peaks with two. Here we now can see some um, yeah, accelerometer raw data from a single axis, and I think it's the x-axis. And it becomes apparent that the signal underlies several distortions um, based on the ground type uh, the elderly people is uh, rolling on with the relator. Um, and the very left, there is a, uh, you can see the linoleum ground, and you can already kind of like deploy a normal uh, peak uh, detection. But then um, we have distortion, for example, from a doorstep. Um, then we have uh, flagstone in the middle. Um, the user is running on flagstone. And we have very tiny vibrations emitted from the, the stone linkings. Yeah, so after processing the data, we achieve something like this. And then we can calculate the peaks and, yeah, and multiply it by two. That's how it works. I explained before, yeah. So um, the next step was, of course, to evaluate the algorithm. Um, how stable is our new algorithm? We ask eight subjects to walk a predefined indoor route with a commercial relator. Um, all, all participants wore the smartwatch on the left arm, um, and the ground truth of the steps was counted by the experimenter manually. Yeah, we eventually scored a recognition of 85%, which is quite encouraging, I think. Um, and next, we ran a field study in which we randomly selected elderly people who were actually using a relator. Um, yeah, we were talking to them, explained the thing, let them sign the uh, consent form, and then attached our watch to their arm. And then they were using their own relator and continuing their own business, like walking the, their trek outdoors, and we recorded this data. 
um, we can see that participant three is kind of an outlier. So um, this uh, lady, she, yeah, she didn't actually like wearing watches and she was readjusting it every time. Then she was bending over on the later. And yeah, that was a little bit hard for us to, to recognize Depsy, but still an overall accuracy of 83% uh, is achieved over all elderly people. Yeah, given the average recognition of 85% in the lab and 83% in the field study, we can see a significant um, improvement um, of performance in contrast to current wrist-worn devices. Yeah, it is step detection for elderly people using or later enables actually for a variety of assessments. That's why it's important because now, um, yeah, we can actually see the reduction of the elderly's uh, physical fitness. We can track the progress um, of a variety of their diseases. And we can even diagnose diseases such as the multiple sclerosis based just on the steps they take. And this is now all already, uh, this is now enabled with this uh, algorithm. However, our proposed algorithm can also be used with healthy subjects, enabling a step counting in situations in which um, algorithms usually already like, or still fail. For example, when pushing objects, um, when pulling objects, or pushing a bike, or yeah, carrying a bag. The motion is so, yeah, so small that usually step detections are not capturing this. And yeah, this is now possible. And with this, I'm finished in my talk. And I thank you very much for your attention again. Thank you. And we have, again, plenty of time for questions. How do you suppose your accuracy uh, compares to just putting the uh, tracker on the hip? Um, I, I, did, I didn't show, but we also uh, used the, the hip. Um, the accuracy was also pretty bad um, because, uh, yeah, usually, as, I, as you could see in the graph before, um, step detection, they calculate with, with a higher step effect. You need to have a higher um, level of speed. And LLEs, they don't have this um, speed level. Yeah. Thanks. So was there a happy ending with the Swedish company? There was a happy ending. So they, they paid in the end. They were very happy. And we had uh, yeah, new jobs from them. And there's an ongoing uh, collaboration now. And yeah, happy ending. <laughs> uh, did you think about the, let's say, the, the person which can walk, but also use the rollator, which would then mean that you would need to do some switching between the two algorithms, so let's say the regular algorithm and your um, rollator algorithm? Yeah, so um, a healthy person, um, let's say we have a, an LD person who is still fit, but using rollator just yeah, for safety reasons, whatever, and who is walking quicker and having a higher step impact. Um, in this case, we envision to open the Butterworth uh, filter a little bit more, and then it would be also easy to um, yeah, calculate uh, his or her steps. Um, yeah, but I think in this range, it would still be feasible without opening the Butterworth, but yeah, a little bit tricking based on the steps impact would be possible. Did you also check for um, false positives? So if I'm just sitting around and I'm having um, the, the watch on my hand. Did it then also detect touches if I just fidget around with my hand? I could lie now, but we, uh, <laughs> we, we didn't um, perform such a study. But obviously, you can always have a look. OK, is this pattern reoccurring? Or is it just like a single motion, like what I'm doing right now? Uh, and then at some point, you can determine, OK, now it's like being steps taken. But yeah, we did not um, have a look at it. But it's yeah, just an implementation thing. Okay. Do I have more clip? Um, okay, just a small follow-up question on uh, the detection. You've mentioned that you can use your algorithm in addition to the currently available. But uh, how do you switch between the two algorithms? How do you know that the typical algorithm failed so that you can switch to yours. So can you auto detect it for some? Um, so in, in most of these cases, um, not like step detection from current devices, 
they don't count any steps. And with, if our algorithm would run in parallel, we could see, hey, um, although the other algorithm does not count steps, we actually see a reoccurring pattern. So he's or she is taking steps right now. So yeah, it, we could either adjust our algorithm that it also counts um, normal steps based on the steps impact and the Butterworth would open, mm -hmm. um, or uh, we just run it in parallel and then count steps um, yeah, to the actual amount counted from the current uh, algorithm in okay. situations when it's not counting, but still the pattern is recurring. Okay, thank you. So, which is? <laughs> okay, let's yes, think how sure, stupid again. Okay. Okay. <laughs> And now it is I want to close the session and uh, this paper track for SUI. After the break, we'll uh, have the keynote from Gregory Welch. And in the break, I want to ask uh, all members of the organizing committee to get up for.